everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. Welcome back. It's been a few weeks I've been off, but I am back. So it's toward the end of October. I see I have a light jacket on. It's a little bit cool, probably in the 65 degrees today, which is a little bit cool this time of year. But anyway, what I'm going to talk about today is actively aerated compost tea. So I get a lot of questions about compost tea. So I'm going to talk about how I make it, what are the key ingredients to make it, how long does it take? But what are the benefits of actively aerated compost tea for your plants? So, without further ado, let me get behind the camera and show you uh, how I make the tea, and I'll show you how I apply it to my plants, the benefits of it, and at the end, I'm going to try to do a little bonus episode. I'll give you an update on my fall garden. Stay tuned. All right, so when you brew compost tea, it's not that difficult. So what you'll need here, and these are some basic uh, tools that you need. Uh, so you'll need a five gallon bucket, which you'll see there. You'll need uh, an air pump, which is, let me see if I get my finger right there. Pretty powerful air pump. You'll need a hose to go in there. And at the bottom, you'll find a air stone. So an air stone is, that, is what you'll find in a fish tank or a fish supply store that provides a good amount of bubbles and oxygen uh, to uh, the compost tea. Uh, so when you brew compost tea, it typically needs to brew for 24 to 38, 24 to 30 hours. So one thing that's really important is that when you start the compost tea, now I'll talk about what, what compost to put in, but to start with you need to fill that five gallon bucket up with water. Now a mistake that many people make when making actively aerated compost tea is they just put the regular garden hose in there or they fill it up in the sink and many of you have chlorinated water which the chlorinate, chlorination or the heavy metals will impact um, your uh, billions of microorganisms you're trying to create in the compost tea. So what you want to buy is you want to buy a, uh, a filter it looks like this okay uh, I got this for Boogie Brew, but it's a filter, it's a carbon filter that uh, hooks up to your hose and it gets rid of all heavy metals, chlorine, etc. So it won't kill uh, the microorganisms that you're trying to uh, multiply within the compost tea. So when you make compost tea, there's really three ingredients. It's relatively easy. Number one, you have to have good compost. That's critical. Um, if you have poor compost, junk in, junk out. It won't work really well. Now what I do is I buy pre-mixed compost for compost tea from Boogie Brew. Now I don't get paid from them, I don't endorse them, but it's easier for me to use. Now I do have a composter, but I just put the regular compost mixed into the soil directly. When I make compost tea, I buy a pre-dry mixed formula. I add the A to the B, it works well, and I brew it for 24 to 30, 30 hours. So the other thing that's really critical with compost is making sure that there's food um, for your microorganisms that are being brewed in this bucket. So what do I mean by food? Now some use molasses, blackstrap molasses, and put that in there, but in, in able to get the microorganisms to multiply, they have to have something to eat and to feast on. And again, many people put molasses and so forth, but with my pre-mixed formula that I do get, it comes with not only the microorganisms, but a food source for them, and it makes it relatively simple. I mix half a cup of, uh, of a bag from A, the A bag, and a half a cup from the B bag. One is the food, one is the microorganisms, and I put it in a burlap sack. And that burlap sack is uh, sitting at the very bottom of that bucket. Uh, so when I started this, uh, bucket, as you can imagine, the bucket, the water is clear. Now it's a nice black, uh, which is filled with these microorganisms. So you need good compost, number one. You need food for the microorganisms that are being brewed. And the last thing you need is oxygen. So that's why we have the air stone at the bottom there with a pump that constantly provides oxygen to the fungi, the bacteria, uh, the uh, protozoa, and the nematodes that are all being brewed and developed in this bucket. Uh, one of the other important things when you brew compost tea is not only the time, but that the temperature stays relatively constant. So if it's 60 degrees or 70 degrees, it's important that it doesn't go to 20 degrees or up to 100 degrees. 
You need to keep it relatively stable when you brew the compost tea, okay? So what you see there and the foam that's at the top of the bucket is a good thing, okay? You would expect foam that shows you that the product's working well and that you are, your, your, uh, your microorganisms, which are billions in that five gallon bucket, again, which are composed of positive bacteria, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and nematodes are being brewed appropriately. So, and how compost tea works, real simply, and I'll show you the application, is there's really two ways to apply the compost tea. One is by uh, putting it in a sprayer and spraying the leaves. And when you spray the leaves uh, of compost tea, it's a foliar spray. So uh, the nutrients are absorbed through the leaves into the plant. And it protects the plant by putting those uh, positive microorganisms on the plant and protecting it from things like disease, okay? So that's what we do there. And then for the soil, what you simply do is you put it in a watering can and you can uh, pour onto the soil and the roots the uh, billions of microorganisms uh, that create a very uh, diverse uh, population of, again, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, back into that soil food web, which reduces the chance uh, of your plants contracting disease, but also provides significant nutrition and the ability for the roots to uptake nutrition uh, within the soil, okay, and the compost which you're applying. So overall, it increases as a natural, healthy, organic garden. So this is an organic method. There are no chemicals used. We're using Mother Nature to help create this uh, diversity needed in the soil and within the plant. So uh, let me take a break from that. I'll show you how I apply it. I'm going to be applying this. I apply it once every two weeks to my tower garden and we can take a look at the results. Stay tuned. All right, so one of the easiest ways to apply the active, actively aerated uh, compost tea is just a simple spray bottle, okay? I have a one gallon Flowmaster spray bottle. I'm ready to go. Remember what I said, when you put it directly, first of all, uh, when you put it into the leaves, it goes directly into the plant. Uh, be sure when you do it, uh, it's a nice cool day here, 60, 65 degrees, so it's not gonna hurt the plant. I recommend you not doing it um, when it's 100 degrees, really hot and the sun is going to scold the plant, it could burn the leaves. Best time to do it is probably in the morning, but I didn't do it this morning, but it's relatively cool now. So I just simply apply it to the leaves, okay? So you'll see here, is a gi this is a gigantic uh, a tomato garden, okay? In my grow stock garden, I probably have 200, 300 tomatoes on it. I want to protect these things. I want to give them the best possible nutrients and create diversity within this. So all I'm going to do is simply put this on a fine mist spray, spray the plant really well, and immediately it'll start soaking up nutrients, okay? All you need is a good fine mist here. Spray it really good. Don't worry about using too much. You can't use too much uh, compost tea. The plant will love you for it, so keep spraying it on. Now the thing you want to really focus on when you spray these plants is spray the entire leaf. Most of the uh, nutrients uh, or the compost tea will be sucked up from the underside of the leaves, okay? So make sure you put it on really good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on really good. I'm going to spray the entire thing. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to do a, 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 a soil drench, okay? So I'm going to coat this entire thing. You don't need much. Uh, probably about a half gallon of this. It'll go a long way. I'll spray the whole thing. I'll come back in a second. So as I said, the other way to do it is a soil drench. Take a watering can. Put your compost tea in the watering can. Go to your, um, your container garden. You can do this in the soil garden too, but... This is obviously a container garden. All you simply want to do is uh, go to the soil uh, where the plant is, give it a good shot of compost tea, uh, work it into the soil, and let it drink it up, okay? Once that soaks in, man, your plant's gonna love you, okay? So again, I do it once every two weeks. Now, the thing I wanted to say earlier and I didn't, is you should be able to, so the, the when you do, um, actively aerated compost tea, when you're finished, it should not smell. There should not be a smell. If it smells, it's anaerobic. You did something wrong, okay? So either the compost was poor to begin with, you didn't give the positive bacteria enough food, food was the third element, uh, to multiply, and the fungi, and the protozoa, 
uh, to multiply, or number three, you didn't give it enough oxygen. So again, the ingredients, good compost to start with, or buy pre-made ingredients like I do. Number two um, is that you have to have oxygen. Okay, you have to have enough oxygen for it to go. And number three, you have to have food for the positive microorganisms to multiply. If they don't, the pathogens will multiply like E. coli. And you pour that into your plants, you're going to have big problems, okay? So again, make sure after you're done, you actively aerated compost tea. There is no bad smell. If it looks like a white foam like I showed you before, it's been brewing for 24 to 30 hours in a consistent temperature. It doesn't smell. You're ready to spray it on your plant. You're ready to put it in your roots and you'll create some positive diversity, biological diversity within your plants and in your soil. Your plants will love you. Anyway, that's all I have for you. Uh, uh, in a second, I'm gonna give you a quick update and I'll show you some of the other things I'm growing here at my garden. All right, this is my bonus episode. If you don't wanna watch it, turn it off. But to my gardening family here on YouTube, here we go. So this is my green stalk garden, as you can see, loaded for all five levels of tomatoes. So this thing is booming. As like I said, I use compost tea on this. I lose, use other organic nutrients and I get a ton of blossoms and fruit. So you can see there is fruit as far as the eye can see throughout this plant. Okay, on that side, this side, it's underneath. Um, it's just remarkable. It's been doing really well. And again, I, don't, I do not get paid by green stalk garden it just works tremendously and it's easy to do if you live in a condo apartment whatever the case may be it's easy for you to grow i think it's about 180 dollars but you can use it season after season after season just keep replenishing the nutrients and do what you got to do okay but overall i hope to get about 200 maybe 300 tomatoes off of this as long as the uh, birds let me have the tomatoes and the weather uh, cooperates so now it's time for me to make you sick. I'm trying not to knock the camera around too much, but let's go. All right, so I've got some container tomatoes growing here under the net. You wonder why? We have something called mockingbirds here in Houston. They love tomatoes as much as we do. So I keep that net on top of it. Over here, as I've seen before, the green pole Kentucky beans are doing pretty well. Uh, they're starting to come in pretty plentiful. You see back there, I've got a bunch of them. Um, and I think we're gonna have a pretty good harvest of Kentucky pole beans. Um, I've got some pickling cucumbers coming in, and what I decided to do, as you saw from the last episode, is repurpose my grape trellis that goes pretty far down there. I'm gonna let the cucumbers grow vertically and hang off the vine. Once I get the pickling cucumbers, I will make dill, pipple, dill pickle, excuse me. So all the way down the line, you'll see pickling cucumbers uh, seedlings, okay? So eventually those will grow up on the trellis and they will hang from the wire trellis. Pretty cool, huh? So it's always great to repurpose things that you're not growing anymore. And uh, I expect uh, some good crops. The reason I'm going with pickling cucumbers is they grow faster. I don't have much time. Uh, it's almost November 1st and uh, hopefully I'll get a nice crop of pickling cucumbers and make some dill pickles. So that's what I got going on there. Um, in addition, I, don't, I won't show you, but I'm going to do Brussels sprouts for the first time this year. That's a good fall winter crop here in Houston, Texas. And I'm going to enjoy those. As you know, they take about 90 to 100 days to fully mature. And I'll have a good crop of that. Let me show you what I'm doing in my side garden as well. So over on this side, I do have two black crim tomatoes that are growing on uh, these tomato cages. And what I've done here, this does not get as much light as I'd like. So what I did was I put kale. So that's a kale plant, and all those at the bottom are kale plants. So uh, I pulled up my um, what were the kiwi vines. They weren't doing that well for whatever reason, and I repurposed it. But the great thing is that that mulch that's been laying there has been laying there for 10 years, so the soil under it's very rich. I think they'll do very well. Again, this only gets four to five hours of sun a day. That's why the tomato plants aren't as big either as the ones I'm going to show you. They were planted at the same time, the ones I'll show you in about two minutes. Uh, but doesn't get as much sun, so the tomatoes won't be as big, the plants won't be as big. Uh, but that's okay for kale plants because they can take a little bit less sun and they don't like that intense heat. So find a way to make it work. So as we go back to my gardening octagon, let's show you what I have here. So, as I said, these things do get eight hours of sun. 
and they were planted at the same time. So you'll see that I've got, uh, these are just the same plant, black crim tomato. It's starting to grow up through my top. It's another black crim right over there. Um, this is a rainbow tomato. And these are silver fir tomatoes, okay? So they're a little bit behind. Hopefully I'll get them lots of blossoms doing pretty well. And on the other side of the garden, um, I do have broccoli. So I've got four broccoli plants there that are just starting. The reason I'm starting them now is they do like cooler weather. It's just started to break. So they do like weather between 50 and 70 degrees, not 80 or 90. And then my open space back there, and when I pull the tomato plants, I'll be putting Brussels sprouts. And then some lettuce as well. That will be my fall winter crop. Uh, again, as I've talked about before, I do not want to overplant. Uh, this is just to feed myself, uh, my family, and to give enough to friends. All these plants that you see are more than I can probably um, eat and give away. That's a common mistake people have is they overplant. But in general, the plants are doing good. I did feed these with compost tea as well. As I said before, when, you, when you're doing compost tea, um, you know, it really, really is beneficial for container plants because they tend to not have as much biodiversity in the soil. Uh, and sometimes they tend to get diseased quicker. Uh, but uh, the compost tea, the actively aerated compost tea, does benefit plants in the ground. So you want to feed them every two weeks as well. So I do feed my, uh, my soil-based plants in the garden. I do uh, feed my container plants as well. Both uh, of those reward me and do a very good job. So this is my quick episode. So I've got tomatoes, broccoli, kale. Um, we I have uh, pickling cucumbers, Kentucky pole beans. And I didn't show you, I do have four or five different herbs growing, but that's what's happening. So I think it's just a race against time. Hopefully in the next 30 days, by November 30th, I'll get some nice, the cherry tomatoes, of course, will get red. But these bigger tomatoes, we'll just have to see. You can't control mother nature. That's one of the great things about gardening. So to my gardening family out there who tunes into me, Thanks so much. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know as well. Uh, I enjoy this. I enjoy meeting different people. If you can uh, send me your questions, I'll try to answer them. It's hard uh, to get to all of them with the volume that I get. But until next time, ha happy fall garden to all of you. Stay happy and healthy. Talk to you later. Bye.